Hey guys, it's Rottweiler back at it again with another video, and today I'm going to be talking about the four best workshop characters that have been added into Rivals of Ether. That's right, I'm talking about Hodan, Malo, Palm, and Olympia. So get your snacks, and let's get into it. Here we go, got my position, let's hit the bro. Looking back, I know they probably doubt me, not a city on my back, I wear it proudly. I'm a hero in the making, if I'm dreaming, you can't wait my time. In the moment, cause I gotta go for the time's gone. Ain't scared of the dark, cause I'm bringing the light with a nice long. I shine on. So, first things first, I just want to preface that a lot of these things are subject to change. For example, a lot of these characters' moves may be tweaked or outright removed for uh, something else. So, just take that with a grain of salt, right? But I still think this will be a good video to do, and it's a fun thing to do because I do believe that the general game plan for each character will remain the same through and through to their release because these characters got picked for a reason. Their gameplay is pretty fun, or the idea of what they do is pretty cool. Now, before I get into Malo and every character past Malo, I just want to say I want to talk about the general game plan, kill moves, and some tips and tricks that you can do to make their uh, game plan or whatever even more fun or more convenient or practical <laughs> so Malo's game plan is that he is in fact a zoner right but not only is he a good zoner he also has a great approach in one move and that is his down tilt so not only can he throw bombs across the map up down in place or forward right he can also sneak in a down tilt and at first glance his down tilt may not seem like it's that good at approaching because this is the hitbox, but if you wave dash into it, he slides pretty far. Same with his up tilt. Not just not to the same extent, but his down tilt is definitely a key move to get in. Not only that, he has this gun. This side B, uh, I'm just gonna call it the sticky, the Glock, the Draco, if you will. This gun is a key part to his gameplay because not only is it a hitbox, um, that can start combos at mid-range, right, like this, but it also sets off his bomb. So if I throw a bomb, like this little tennis ball here, or this baseball here, it takes a very long time for me to, um, to go off. Even if it hits someone, it still takes a while to go off. But if I throw the bomb and then I shoot it, it goes off almost immediately. And that goes for almost all, well actually it goes for all his bombs, but, uh, well, the big bomb, I'll get over, this, this one, this is a little different, if you shoot it, it still takes quite some time to go off, as you can see, but there's a reason for that, it's extremely powerful, I've seen people die at like 50 to this bomb, so that's why that doesn't go off immediately, they'd be kind of broken. But, uh, this makes his firecracker, and all his, his other zoning tools, a lot more deadly and a lot more lethal slash potent, because not only do you have to worry about not going there, because this could happen, or up, that was a little hard, but because that can happen, right? Or that is not what I wanted. All right, you get the point. If I throw a bomb and then I shoot it, you're going to have a big problem on your hands. So the gun is a very, very insane part of his gameplay. It can even extend combos. For example... Uh, that was almost it. But, for, for example, I can land that shot. I actually just missed, but if I landed that shot, could I got an extender in, in the air like that. And kind of got more off of it. So, mid-combo, it's still good, right? And that is why the gun is a key part of his game plan. So, next, I want to talk about his, well, one of his best kill moves in bat. Honestly, I think it is his best kill move. I think this is a lot... Uh, better than his other kill moves because this doesn't require the opponent to be off stage to kill uh, It is a straight-up just high knockback move if you uh, space for the tipper, right? It's forward air the Superman punch or the hero punch Because I think the uh, The theme of Malo is that he's like a hero or a vigilante like he's supposed to be like some villain uh, Destroyer or whatever. So this is like uh, that like epic punch you know he goes off stage and you can uh release the punch when you want and it's a spike it's an extremely strong spike and it's very satisfying to land if you can land it and 
an extremely satisfying move to land. And it's kind of weird having a kill move on your down B as like your main kill move in a forward air as your main kill move instead of, you know, the normal strong attacks that like what people do. Uh, but it's that's the part of Molo that's kind of fun and what it feels different, you know. Throwing a smash attack or throwing a bomb as a smash attack is definitely something, you know, unique. <laughs> right? Uh, after that, we've got his back air. Milo's back air is a pretty straightforward back air. He just does like a like a long kick, and it has a lot of range. It's not like really strong, but like it's strong enough to start you know, store, scoring edge guard kills or at the ledge. You know, it's it's actually pretty good. If they don't di, they're gonna die. Kind of move, right? Easiest to land kill move for me is up air. Yep. Is easiest to land kill move. Right? That is so insanely strong. Like missing the eye like an up tilt or something that knocks you up pretty high and then getting up air to like 120 and dying is actually pretty strong, right? Most characters don't have an up air that kills that early. But the downside is that it's very easy to overshoot. It's like they took Sylvanas' up air, which has a lot of instances where it just doesn't connect, you know? And they kind of dialed that up a lot more, but as a reward, they made the second hit much stronger than Sylvanas' up air. So, you, you're, gonna have, you're definitely going to be instances where you land up air one, but don't get the second, right? People are moving. Uh, you're moving to try to follow the eye. If, if they mix you, then you might miss the second hit. So... Yeah, it's, it's very good, but it's also something you gotta remember. So I've really only covered like four kill moves with Malo, and that's because he really doesn't have many kill moves in general. I mean, yeah, his bombs are pretty strong. Well, mainly just this big one. Right? But the amount, I, I'm not ready for like that big brain bomb setup like guide yet. So I may say that for later, but yeah, it, it's definitely his fifth kill move, I guess I can say. So the first tip I want to talk about for Malo is his down smash. His down smash puts the bombs right near him, and that is very good because you can hit the bombs around. Like, you don't have to, you know, um, just let them do their thing. You can actually hit them around, right? Like that. So, if you put it in front of you, you can up tilt and cover like an aerial approach because the thing about his bombs is that once you hit them and then at least like except for the big bomb the big bomb will always go off like a second and a half after it's hit so on contact these bombs once hit will blow up immediately you know so that's really good and now you have an anti-air because if that hits them after you hit it you know go off so up tilt to anti-air f tilt to stop you know people from being or trying to camp you from across the stage and then you have jab for people right in front of you, or down tilt, or uh, what's all oh, bat. The thing about Malo's bat and Malo's gun is when he does down smash, you can immediately cancel the end lag into one of the two. So, so for that kind of setup or that kind of setup. And when you hit the bomb with down B, it makes that sound. It's kind of pleasing to hear, but it's pretty cool. And my second tip with Malo is that. He has an extra jump. So, it's not as high as the other two, I believe, but it's definitely extremely helpful to have an extra jump like that. Like, look at this. Like, this is so ridiculous if you're camping people. Like, look at this platform camping potential. I know that sounds lame, but this is actually so powerful, regardless if you like it or not. So I think I said that Malo was my favorite of like the four, but definitely Hodan comes in a close second place. He's really, really cool. His design concept is uh, akin to Blanca or just any charge character in Street Fighter, I believe. So for example, uh, this is what I look like when I'm standing still. But if I hold down, right, you see like the little steam around me, right? Um, this indicates that my next uh, vertical special or vertical move is going to have like an empowered uh, version. Uh, not every move has an empowered version, I believe. I, I don't. Well, I don't think so. But moves like up B do. So this is my normal up B, right? But when I am in steamed, it goes much higher. And at like 90, this will even like probably galaxy Rano. It's it's that powerful. So okay, not galaxy, but damn close. 
So, uh, movement is very important with this character because you're building up steam either horizontal or vertical, which is, again, such a genius concept in a platform fighter. It's such a movement heavy game. Like, usually when you're playing like Street Fighter, um, which is, I think, where this comes from, when you hold back or you move, you know, you try to charge up, all you really do is like walk backwards or whatever. But in this game, you can like be like moonwalking while building up steam, right? So you can like essentially keep your positioning in place while still building that up. And that's really cool like that, right? So another thing about Hold On is that he, he has negative steam and he has positive steam. I know it's a lot to take in. So negative steam means you build up like steam for the op for the opposite direction. So if you're if you're going left, right, you can you can do side B to the right, right, and you get in a chart a charged version of it. So this is my side B if I'm like have no steam, right. But if I give it negative charge by holding one direction and then go the opposite way, I'll have an empowered ver a po an empowered version of side B. So another thing. That Hodan has um, is positive steam. So, for example, if I'm doing a dash attack, I have this. But if I run for in that direction for a while and then dash attack, you see that little charge icon. I go a little further and I have more knockback. Yeah, definitely more knockback. That's a pretty neat thing to have. And also, my forward air is uh, affected by this as well. So my forward air is just a sort of like arm swing. Right, to swipe, but as you saw right there, if I run in a direction for long enough or hold that direction for long enough, it turns to a spike. Right? That is so sweet. And not only does Hold On have all these, like, you know, build up steam, um, or negative steam, positive steam, charge uh, stuff, he also has a steam effect on a lot of his moves, right? So here's his Nair, and you may be thinking, why didn't they go anywhere? Well, they didn't go anywhere right there because on some on the end of some of his attacks, like his down tilt, his nair, and I believe there's something else, but he has steam. He has a steam hitbox after it. Let me show that. Hold on. So that's the hitbox of nair. And then there's the hitbox from his steam, right? And that is so broken because it, it gives like a, a level of safety because if you parry the steam, it doesn't go into uh, parry stun for one. Which is absurd. And then two, uh, Hodan is basically covering himself while also giving himself a little bit of an like a um, how do I say this? Like, like let me just show you an example. This is awesome. This is something I want to say in tips and tricks. But since I'm already here, I just want to say it really quickly. So, for example, um, I can fast fall my nair, right? So I'm holding down while I fast fall, right? And now, on that hit, I'm still holding down. Uh, that steam is going to a true combo to an up B like so but it only works on DIN ignore that that's a cool setup you can do and it's all because the steam keeps people in place when they don't think they'll be in place like that once again right that's insane and not only does he do does he do that or can he do that with his steam and his uh, negative positive stuff or whatever but he also has things called sweat spots let me turn this off yes a sweat spot uh, the sweat spots uh, allow him to be in steam while he's near them. He's, his body becomes hot because the steam is like right there. And so he can do an up B without having a charge. I can do come on, a forward air without having a charge or a, um, a set up B. Um, dash attack. Uh, literally anything. Oh, I forgot the other one. The other one would be his down smash. Right? And that's an auto parry. He parries while doing down strong or whatever. So... If they, if they hit you while you're holding down and then you do this and they hit that, they're going to get parried into a very strong move. Right? A very strong move. Yeah, these sweat spots, like I was saying. Uh, that is like his, his stage control option because he can down B and then uh, jump cancel his down special if he happens to hit the sweat spot. And also, he can grab uh, this portion of his uh, sweat spot so when it's not a little spirit guy and it's just a little like rolling um, steam cloud uh, if you down special or up special into it before it turned into like a spirit he will get a um, 
a opportunity to grab it and throw it down and then basically you get to move your steam clouds or your sweat spots around the map more to your liking oh there it is okay so I can do something like this that, and, it, and it does have a hitbox so and these things before they become sweat spots have hitboxes so this is lingering hitbox until it falls so talking about kill moves with this character that's a funny one because he really doesn't have kill moves yet <laughs> like this up smash is, is neat but it comes out behind him on frame 21 and then he starts moving forward so it is very it's very cool and it's very sh strong off stage not on stage too much cuz like that that's actually I mean I guess that's pretty pretty decent the main power is the fact that it can spike off stage so that's really what you want but it's very slow but it's definitely something you should use if you can and then you have his upbeat which is his main kill move this is like the star of the show here is hold on up special this is like the reason you play him if you really like uh, hold on what else does he have he's got what, what do you have Oh, down smash when it's fully charged. That's actually decently strong. It's got down strong. That didn't kill. F strong. Like, honestly, it's mainly just his smash attacks and his up B that are like the main kill moves here. So. Right? That up B is disgusting. And the fact that you can combo into it from this. Is so ridiculous. This down special, this little hop here, is an active hitbox like the entire time. And because you're holding down the do down special, you can now do a fully charged up B because you were charging while doing down B. Again, he's a very confusing character at first, but once you understand how he works and take the time to actually dissect his, uh, his, his game plan, it's really fun and it's really deep and it's really interesting. So for the tips for Hoedown, we have his recovery. So his recovery is actually not too good. It's very linear, um, at least on like the, the surface level. But you remember you have steam clouds here that can instantly give you the uh, B you're looking for. That was not what I was looking for. So that's uh, my tip with Hoedown. So now we have um, a character I kind of slept on, Olympia. So I first thought she was pretty bland, not gonna lie. But then I used this crystal thing, and everything came together. And I was like, this character is beautiful. I love this character so much. So, Olympia is like a love letter to fighting games, like in general. Like, she's like the epitome of fighting games in Rivals of Ether. Uh, her moves are very fighting game inspired. Uh, if you like, uh, I know it's a pretty rare character in Tekken, but if you like um, Leo, Leo from Tekken, this uh, jab combo will probably make you happy because it's like very similar to Leo or how Leo fights in Tekken. Um, not only that, but she's got a lot of armor moves. Like this is like a focus, like Ryu or Akuma, right? And her down special. She can absorb a hit and then she can, you know, basically uh, dash out of it with armor. Um, honestly, it is kind of toxic, not gonna lie. Any any kind of armor, especially in Rivals, a game without shields, is gonna be really obnoxious because we can't, like, well, I guess grab her also is another thing. So we can't really grab this girl, so she just basically gets to come back and do what she wants and does what she wants. And up, up, also, she can, like, attack out of this. So. She can like easily just take a hit and then hit you immediately after and start her own combo, which can definitely be a problem in the future. But right now it's fine. It's Crystal. This is her where her game her game plan really shines and where it starts. This Crystal is a projectile, right? And if I press B again, it becomes this um, this stationary uh, stage control element. And what she can do with it is if she's outside the circle and presses B, she'll immediately busted in uh, into pieces and anything in there when I do that is frozen so she can hand like land like a super powerful attack or start her own combo you do whatever you want basically they are stuck for a while right you basically get a huge opening if they get hit by that freeze so that's something they're going to have to either 
uh, hit the crystal, which is kind of risky because if she reads that and she uh, pops it before, then you get stunned. So people tend to just like you know play around it, you know they jump around it, they they um, just don't want to you know interact with it because it's pretty uh pretty crazy if you get stunned by that against a character so strong like this, right? Yeah, her um her crystal is really cool, and not only does it have that freeze effect, but it'd be pretty boring if that's actually all it did to be honest, because it would just be kind of lame <laughs> to be real. But if she's inside of the crystal, presses B, she'll kick the crystal right, and she'll pop up. And what this does is not only have a hitbox. But it also turns the crystal off so they cannot hit it. So if they're trying to like get in there really quickly and you don't think you can pop the crystal in time to stun, you can just press B really quickly, hit the crystal, turn it off, they can't hit it, and then they have all that time to wait before they can try to hit it again. That is so sick. And not only that, this is my favorite part about this, is that it's a hitbox also. So you can combo off of that. And that is just so sweet. But I use it for movement all the time. Like, I do this, wait around. Like that, and I look for an opening. Like it's so sweet, and or a mid combo. Oh, hold on, hold on. That that can be crazy. Like, oh my God, you see the potential here? Do you see this? Like, that's actually so cool. Like, she is so sweet. I just hope, like, when she comes to the real game, I actually do want to like dabble her a little bit. Honestly, I look. I look and sound more excited for her than the other two but there's so much potential with this crystal like movement i love movement like that that shit is my drug i i this this game's movement is literally the reason i play it so like any of this is like gonna be so fun for me can i wave that out i can wow she's so sweet what i've gathered from like my time playing her is that you kind of play kind of like a rock like you take hits, you hit very hard, right? You gotta, you gotta just get in there and like get the opening and do a lot of damage, or at least do a lot of knockback, right? Like, oh my god, she feels so good, right? Like her hits are very hard, and that's so satisfying, right? So that's the kind of like game style I have for her. She's kind of like a sumo wrestler. You just eat hits and you just you know hit them harder than they hit you. So that is just sweet. So so kill moves with her is going to be pretty crazy. She's got this up smash, which is um, extremely strong, especially if you focus. And then, like, you know, like you focus, you eat the hit, and then you just up smash. Or you've got, well, honestly, all her smash attacks are pretty strong. This down air isn't absurdly strong, right? As you can see, it looks so powerful. Like you said, it, it feels powerful. I don't know what to say. But her forward air, it's a spike on the bottom and on like the side and I think even above, it's just like a really strong horizontal hit like that. So that's another kill move. Her side B is a kill move. Kind of toxic to be honest. It's kind of like um, Orcane um, side B, in a, oh no, or Shovel Knight side B if it killed, I should say. And finally for her tips and tricks, I just want to mention that her side B is jump cancelable in the beginning. So in the air or on the ground, you can jump out of this, which means you can wave dash out of this, by the way. So last but not least, we have Palm, who is a very powerful character. I actually believe that if this character isn't done, like, well enough, this character could easily break the game and be, like, the best character in the game, depending on how they handle her or her, like, balancing. Because she has float, right? And this float is obviously powerful for a number of reasons. We all have seen what Peach can do with float. It's really powerful to have an option like that for both recovering and neutral and advantage state, right? Being able to pressure off stage with forward air is powerful, especially if you can combo into two or whatever. Is really insane. And not only that, but yeah, as we all know, float can only go left and right, correct? But with Palm, you can put up a little music sheet here and you do float. You can go any direction you want, and once you touch it, you don't have to stay in it. You keep the the, the ability to go up and down whenever you want, which is absurd. Uh, not for too long, though, apparently. Just for a little bit. So that is very powerful uh, to have, to say the least. And not only does she have that, she has a very good projectile, which has a lot of hit stun. A lot of hit stun. So her whole thing is that she's honestly a zoner. Like... She's a very campy zoner. Like, she likes to just throw notes. And these notes go faster if they are thrown in the sheet of music. It's really powerful. 
and she's very small. This might be the skinniest Hurt Box in Rivals of Ether. So she's really small, even though she is slightly taller. Not slightly, but she's she is taller than Maple. Uh, she's very slender, right? So it's going to be hard to hit her um, in general. Uh, but she's also given uh, a butler, or well, honestly, he's a bodyguard. But I love calling him the butler because I, then I can call him Alfred from a Batman. <laughs> so she summons Alfred, and Alfred just has... Uh, a quick move where he says get off my girl then he knocks him into the air and that is just so much potential to get a combo right that is so strong so her kill moves are as you just saw earlier up air which is probably her best mo kill move so next she has her down strong which is really good it's very fast well no, it's not the fastest, honestly. It's like slower. It's like two frames slower than Silvano's down strong, which I think this is frame 13, I believe. So yeah, Silvano's is like 11. This is like it's like too fast, but it doesn't really have too much recovery, so you can like kind of spam this over and over until you get what you want, which is the kill. And then she has her forward air, which honestly isn't that strong, but the fact that she can be off stage, like you gotta remember, like. Honestly, Bash, like I always complain about Ori's Bash killing like 50, but on sta like center stage, Bash doesn't even kill sometimes like 160. But it's just that Ori has you off stage when he hits you with Bash, right? So it's the same concept with her, right? I'm not very really good with it, but right? Like you keep. That'd be crazy. But. Can basically keep doing it and at higher percentages like a hundred you can actually start linking these together right and then you're still so safe like it could if you could if you can just imagine someone being that far off like getting linked by these or whatever it's actually quite absurd and that will definitely kill it like 50 or 60 if you chain them together or whatever so her forward air is actually really damn good and the last move I want to talk about is her up smash I'll call it the pop star. Yeah, her up smash is really strong. That's the last move I want to talk about in terms of killing. And the crazy part is that if you have Alfred here, like, uh, and read some DI, you can do some like crazy stuff. My friend was doing some disgusting things with this guy. Like that. Like, literally disgusting with platforms. And they, if they miss DI on Alfred, they're asking to die that up strong at like 80. It's crazy. And finally, I want to talk about the tips and tricks of this character. And number one is uh, her forder has the ability to throw her back, like um, Orkane's uh, forder, for example, the bubble butt. Same thing with her, uh, but I like that she can slide on the ground if you're low enough, kind of like a super wave dash. So she can do like, well, let's see, I can get more than that. I can use it for like a movement option. That's really cool, right? Like that's that like there is insane. That is so sweet. If you like also roar into it, like, you know, like this, you don't even lose like any momentum or speed if you like roar into it. That's so crazy. She has, oh yeah, Alfred again. So Alfred uh, on the stage, yeah, he's uh, really good. But also off stage, he'll fall down and catch certain recoveries. And I don't think you can actually hit Alfred or beat him with any attack. So. Maple clean to the wall or Ori clean to the wall grab him and the last thing I want to talk about is her recovery with uh, the sheet so not only does she get this ability to you know hover in it and go anywhere she wants right but if she up B's it puts her in um, as you saw there uh, well first if she does up B she goes into free fall but if she touches these notes she can act again she can't up B again but she can act again so you can do something like this Float up, air dodge, you still have a double jump, right? Her recovery becomes insane. And that is so good. I mean, she is an air character. She has to have um, a good recovery, right? That's just part of the part of the uh, the contract, right? <laughs> so that has been the four characters I want to discuss today. Malo, Hodan, um, Olympia, and uh, Pom. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys find one you like. If you guys like aren't really vibing with like the main cast, right? And you're new. Hopefully these four will give you another um, you know chance to like somebody. So that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. Rob Waller out. Peace. Slay!
bang to your neck That's a choke slam Better call a four To assassinate your whole fam Absa in the back She making sure this shit electrifying Lyrics over he So now we gotta say